Um, this is our last video, and so we're going to be looking at the, a different type of a polar curve than we did before, one like this, 1 minus sine theta. So it's our cardioid, and it's not just the cardio we're looking at, but we're looking at this. So as it goes around, you can see it just keeps repeating. And so we can just focus on it at 2 pi, or a period of 2 pi, because it's going to give us all of our vertical tangents, and they're just going to repeat. So it goes through with one period, which is 2 pi. So here we go. So we need the first to find the derivative. So r prime, and that would be a negative cosine theta. So now if we take and plug it in, we get dy dx is equal to negative cosine theta, sine theta, plus r, which is 1 minus sine theta, cosine theta. And so if we set the top equal to 0, this is going to give us our, oops, I almost said vertical, our horizontal tangents. And then we do the bottom. So negative cosine theta, cosine theta, minus 1 minus sine theta, and then sine theta. So we're just plugging it in. And so this one here will give us our vertical tangents. So let's start with the top, which is our horizontal tangents, possibly, right? Um, so we have negative cosine. So let's factor that cosine out. Since our main goal is to factor this, so that we can set it equal to zero, that's what you want to do first. So if you see a common factor like cosine, just take it out. And now we have cosine theta, and then one minus two sine theta, and we set that equal to zero. So you can see cosine theta equals zero, and then one equals two sine theta. So one half equals sine theta. And now you can just go to your unit circles and pull everything out. So cosine is equal to zero at pi over two, and 3 pi over 2. So when our theta equals that. And we get sine theta equals a half when theta is equal to pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6. Now before you say these are our vertical tangents and they're located here, we need to go back and make sure that we don't have a 0 over here that matches them. Then you have to look at the graph to decide which one it is. So now our bottom. So our bottom would be negative cosine squared. Minus sine theta. I'm just distributing right now. Plus sine squared theta. And now to factor this, we want everything equal to sine. So we'll go negative. Why did I put x there? I don't know. All right. So this is negative 1 plus sine squared theta minus sine theta plus sine squared theta. And so we want to put everything in order. So squared goes first, and there's two of them. All right, and now we factor. So we have two sine theta and then sine theta. And then obviously it needs to be one and one for our last. And so we need the middle term to be negative. So that has to go here, and that's positive. And then we set this equal to zero to get our vertical tangents. So we know sine theta is equal to one. And we know 2 sine theta is equal to negative 1. So sine theta is equal to negative 1 half. All right. So at negative 1 half, theta is equal to 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. And theta equals to oop, pi over 2. So you can see that what we have here is they're both equal to 0 at theta equals pi over 2. So if we go to our graph, you can see that at pi over 2, we actually have a vertical tangent. So because this is a vertical, we're going to cross it off. See right there, it's a vertical tangent. And so that means we're only going to get horizontal tangents at theta equals 3 pi over 2, pi over 6, and 5 pi over 6. So our points, our locations would be theta. Remember, it's r theta. 3 pi over 2, pi over 6. and 5 pi over 6. And these are going to be our horizontal tangents. And our vertical tangents then would be at the pi over 2, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. All right, and then to find the r coordinate, we know it's 1 minus sine theta. And so we're just going to plug that in. 
So at 3 pi over 2, we know we get negative 1. So that would become 2. And then this is 1 minus. And then these are nice and quick because we already know pi over 6 was sine. So it's a half and a half. And so that's a half. And that's a half. And then we come over here and do the same thing. So for pi over 2, we'd have 1. So again, we're just using what we already know. These are both sine. So at pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 would be 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. And then 7 pi and both 11 pi over 6, uh, sine theta is equal to 1 half. So sine of pi, 7 pi over 6 and sine of 11 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. So I can use that for both. That would be 1 plus 1 half. And so that's 3 halves or 1 and a half, your choice. And then now we have all of our coordinates. So if you see uh, a repetition here, you can't just rely on that it's, oh, it's going to be the horizontal. You've got to look and see which one it is. So just check your graph. It'll tell you if it's a horizontal or vertical. We're just looking for the locations. But we should still check these. So we're going to look at 3 pi over 6, 3 pi over 2, pi over 6, and 5 pi over 6. So there's 3 pi over 2. Yep, horizontal. Pi over 6. Yep, horizontal. 5 pi over 6. Also horizontal. And looking at the graph, you can see that those would be the only three that would give us horizontal. Now, vertical, we should be getting one here, one in the middle, and one here. So that should be these three. And we already checked pi over 2, so now we just need to do 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. So that was our pi over 2, our 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. All right, and there we go.